very extensive amount of material to introduce this direction in all walks of life, meaning all different professions. Um, we have 32 hours of lectures on different topics. We have other videos. We have books. We have free ebooks on our website. We have hundreds of questions and answers on our website. We meet with our group every Sunday. We play a lecture. We um, we take questions directly. Myself and Jack take questions from people around the world, and we have that available on on archive too. So we are working very hard to educate people in this direction who want to work toward the Venus Project's end goals. A very good idea is to check our website, thevenusproject.com. You can find all kinds of information on the Venus Project, how the cities are built, why they're built that way, why they're round, all the details that I'm sorry I didn't have enough time to go into in this brief film. And we do have um, philosophy and new teaching techniques in some of our lectures that we offer as well. Thank you, Roxanne. И, уважаемые коллеги, у меня к вам небольшая просьба. Когда вы задаете вопрос, пожалуйста, представьте. I also ask everybody kindly to introduce yourselves before you ask a question. Thank you. Yeah, hello, I'm Anton Chapilka. I'm with the Russian Union for Environmentally Friendly Construction. I've been watching your movies for the last two or three years. And so far, I haven't been able to find an answer as to how do we go into this future. The United Nations has announced this year to be the year of sustainable development for everybody. And they seem to be talking of some programs and tools that will take us there. You've got a great fairy tale like Wizard of Oz. What, I'm, what I feel is missing from this story is a recipe. Will you tell us about your recipe one day? Thank you very much. Look at our website. We answer all kinds of questions. You have to look at the venusproject.com. He's asking how do we get there? How do we get from here to there? It's a fairy tale. He wants the recipe of how to get to that. By looking at the website, there are various descriptions and getting our books, our videotapes. Look up our store. We have all kinds of construction information, design information, and why things are the way we propose them. I am, I am relaying the question again to Jacques because he is hard of hearing and cannot always hear the questions. But, you know, a lot of people ask us, well, how do we get there and what do we do enable, to enable us to get there? I can only say that I have been working at it for 35 years. Jacques has been working at it to develop this system for over 75 years with very extensive methods of changing people as well and working with people, all kinds of people, from clan, drug addicts, alcoholics, uh, what they call juvenile delinquents, and change them to be constructive um, people in, in a society. But, um, you know, we're, we are only two people, and we have been financing this direction ourselves because we got no outside funding. We developed a 21-acre research center. We put up 10 buildings ourselves devoted toward making more materials and doing more work toward this direction to introduce it to the general public. We are at the early stages of social change. Um, people are beginning to understand that this system does not work. You can't force social change on a group of people that really are not ready for it. In a lot of ways, it depends on what you do to make this happen. We work at it all the time. We put all of our funding toward it. So it really depends on how much other people understand this and work towards it. Um, we invite you to become part of the Venus Project community and help us introduce this to the general public. We have blueprints, we have plans for city designs, we have hundreds of different types of cities, but we need finances within the monetary system to make it happen. But more than that, 
what is most important, if we built a city and had people come into the city who have the same values and have the me same methods of thinking about things and the same types of education and the same types of relationships, how they relate to one another, the city would become chaotic, as chaotic as it is today. That's why it's really, it's a, it's a large learning curve to understand what the Venus Project is first and foremost and then implement it. Join us, and if you have a, if you have a method, if you have access to resources, if you have access to funds, and you'd like to join with us to implement something, we are ready to do that. I would also like to say that years ago, I asked myself, how are we going to change the world? There's so many different concepts of religion, so many different social customs. So what I did then is said to myself, put your system to test. So I joined the Ku Klux Klan in America and dissolved it in a month and a half. Then I joined the White Citizens Council. They hate foreigners, all foreigners. I dissolved that in one month alone. Then I dissolved a group of people that believe that the earth is flat. I've been changing people all my life. I've been working on how to change people. When somebody said to me, you're a smart guy, Jock. What do you think of the Ku Klux Klan? I never attacked. I said, it's a great organization, but it doesn't go far enough. That gets their ear. Do you understand? If you attack, you lose them. So you have to learn different strategies for getting to different types of people with different values. The language that we use was designed hundreds of years ago. And you can't talk to people. You only talk at people. I know you don't all realize that. I don't have the time to go into detail with it. But I can tell you this, that if you learn how to communicate in essence with information, you can turn people around. And it takes a lot of reading of our literature. The book is called The Best That Money Can't Buy. It's a moneyless system. If you use money to help people get elected, you owe them a favor after they are elected. Do you understand that? The monetary system, you can pay off senators, judges, lawyers. It's no good. The monetary system breeds co corruption. And if you don't overcome that, you cannot overcome the problems. There's lots of detail I realize was left out of the film. We just didn't have the time. But there's, we have answers to most questions. If you frame your question, mail it to Roxanne Meadows at the Venus Project, we will try to answer it. Well, I hope we still have uh, loads of time to take other questions from the audience. Here you go, ma'am. for this beautiful and inspiring movie. I'm a student, y young researcher, and my current project is uh, uh, to design the future of Moscow. And uh, my question for you is, uh, you speak about, uh, a lot about the changes, and what drives people to change their values and to change their behaviors? Thanks. What drives people to change their values and to change their behaviors? New information. Without the information, they cannot change their behavior. All people are victims of their culture. If you were brought up in Nazi Germany as a baby, if you never saw anything else, you'd be a Nazi. You don't have a frame of reference that's broad enough to make decisions. We have to impart the knowledge, the new knowledge that we have to other people. And we have to be very careful about how we do that. We have to develop strategies for doing that. Reason and logic does not work on people that have never been exposed to reason or logic. I hope you understand the meaning of that. Thank you. Another question here, please. Здравствуйте. Меня зовут Александр Кузьмин. Hello, my name is Alexander Kuzmin. У меня следующий вопрос. Uh, we're still living in a monetary system, a money-based system, if you like. 
and it's quite difficult to disrupt or dissolve a system like this. How much do you think will a first prototype city cost? So essentially, if you manage to find uh, business models who will find it, how, how much would it take? Thank you. That's a question in the monetary system. Do we have the resources to do that? Yes, we do. We have more than enough resources to rebuild everything on Earth. In other words, the questions that most people are asking are within the monetary system. In other words, when war comes, we ask, do we have enough aluminum to compete with the Russians or the Germans or the French or the Greeks? If we don't have enough resources, we cannot engage in war. We have to first study resources. Ask, what do we have on Earth? How many factories do we have? What's our capacity to produce? Well, how many houses can we produce a month with the latest technology? Not how much will it cost. Do we have the resources? He was asking if we built the first city within the monetary system, how much would it cost? We don't build it within the monetary system. Thank you. My name is Vasil Afraev. My name is... Raif Vasilov. I'm uh, with the Biotechnologist Society of Russia. This is the second time I'm deeply impressed by your presentation. Thank you very much for it. About 40 years ago, uh, Dennis Meadows uh, published his great work called Limits of Growth. And that was, as you do remember, uh, his uh, report to the Club of Rome. And uh, he actually is the father of sustainable development concept. Dennis Meadows recently came to Moscow and in an interview he said that he has no longer faith in the future of humanity. He believes that the humanity as a whole is not prepared for salvation, so to speak. He says that only parts of humanity can survive, others are doomed. Your concept, your theory, relies on two fundamentals. Financial changes, financial engineering, if you like, or changes in the financial system, and social engineering, or changes in the social system. In fact, alternative economy or alternative money system are very much debated now. What is your vision of how such an alternative money system or no money system would operate? Thank you very much. I am sorry that the answer I'm going to give you is not a pleasant one. People must lose their jobs, must lose their home, lose confidence in the people they elected before they even look for something new. It depends on how much work you do on trying to change people and their values. You have to teach them how the new method works. For example, people are not told to go ahead and build a new city. First, they're given a different value system. With the old value system, if you put the same people in the new cities, you'll have the same problems. You have to have a different value system. Well, by that I mean you have to raise children to understand the methods of science not the dictates of science, the methods of science, that no one, no one makes decisions in the Venus Project. They arrive at decisions. I hope you know the difference. If you don't know the difference, it means you might take samples of the soil from all over the world and bring it to central agriculture. There they would analyze the soil, and by the contents of the soil, they'll tell you what to grow. No opinions anymore. Just findings and research. All decisions are based upon studies. If you build a dam, the fish can't get to the spawning grounds. So you have to build a step system on the side of the dam so the fish can swim up to the spawning grounds. You have to consider nature when you design, not just human needs. We're part of nature, not a separate form of nature. 
And until that people are very well educated, at least a planning group, you cannot engage in this project any more than you can build an airplane without studying the principles of flight. You have to know the principles of sustainability. Also, this system that we're using today, the monetary system, is crashing all over the world, and people don't know what to do. You know, they're, they're automating in order to maintain the competitive edge. They have to automate. It's cheaper to automate than to go abroad for cheaper labor, and people understand this. So more and more factories are automating. But this is the demise of the monetary system. Whether the Venus Project continues to exist or not, this system is on its way out. As long as you automate and you get rid of people, and you, the people do not have salaries, they lose their jobs, they do not have money to buy the goods and services turned out. That's the end of this system. There are many other scenarios, too, as to why it's falling apart you know, environmentally or um, scenarios of war. So Dennis Meadows was looking at the confines of the system that he's living in, and he's understanding that it's doomed, but he didn't work on an alternative system. Jacques, when he was in the early 20s, went through the Great Depression and understood that the system didn't work, yet there were goods in store windows, there were things for sale, there was um, arable land to grow food, but people just didn't have money in their pockets. So he, he realized it was the rules of the game that we played by, and he went on a search his whole life to find a system that would work, didn't find one, so, the de so he developed one. He developed it both technically and which got, went along with a, a new social system as well, a new value system. So no one else is really working on this direction and, and brought it and encompassed so many different aspects of society and studied them. Jacques was a multidisciplinarian. He is a multidisciplinarian. So he, he didn't just look at one aspect. Today, there really aren't scientists. There are people who are specialized in different sciences and they can only look at that aspect in a scientific way. They question it, they, criti they question it critically, but they don't critically question the whole society and understand how there are many different interacting variables. So, and even understand why we behave the way we do and the influences of the, that the money system has upon us to shape our values. You know, all people, raised in any system are raised to perpetuate that system. Who's the greatest person in the, in the land? You know, pledge allegiance to our flag, pledge allegiance to our president. Not, they don't look at other countries and ask, what are the benefits and what are the, the better aspects of that country? They uphold one country and they become nationalistic. If you don't control people, you can't get people to go to war against other countries. And so, you know, as I was saying, Dennis Meadows didn't, didn't have a broader understanding of, of the interaction of, of all aspects of society. And this is an alternative, a real sustainable alternative. They look at the word sustainable today in terms of sustainable for whom and for what. Bankers look at it as sustainability to perpetuate their business. Architects look at sustainability to perpetuate their business. They might put a green roof on it, but they don't look at it and coordinate an entire social system and a method for people to become sustainable and a value system to become sustainable, which does not include money in the scenario if you really want sustainability for the planet and one another. That's essentially correct. Hello, my name is Dennis. I have been studying your works for quite some time, and I've got a scientific question for you, sir. What do you think about uh, meditation? Because uh, 
there is this idea here that meditation is a way to enlightenment and it could possibly help to change people's values. What do you think, sir? You can only meditate on your background. If you don't have the proper background, you cannot meditate on chemistry, on the structural engineering, on design of aircraft. This takes actual schooling and education in technology. If you meditate on your navel, all you'll have is a good image of the navel and nothing more. You can't meditate in order to get along better with, with your fellow human being if you don't understand how they acquire their behavior, how they are products of their environment and their background. People today, even if they meditate, they get mad at other people because they think that they have different choices and should choose to do something differently, not to hurt people, not to pollute the earth, but they don't because they're raised in an environment that, that reinforces the ability to acquire more money to pay off their stockholders and they get reinforced for this but they don't have the luxury to care about people or the consequences of that they're directionalized they have to take care of themselves everybody's out for themselves in this culture and meditating do, does not give you the tools of how we behave the way we do how we relate to one another how we build faster, better transportation systems, how we build safer housing, how we build total, total city systems. It does not give you information. I'm sorry, it's a lot of hard work to acquire that. Thank you, Roxanne. Спасибо большое за показ. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm uh, Nadezhda Vlasova. I'm a uh, the ambassador for peace. I'm happy that so many people start thinking about it and I understand that uh, our Federation for Global Peace is in fact uh, working in tune with uh, what you've been doing for 75 years and when we bring people together we bring you know people from all works of life, people of all ages and uh, quite often we have, say, millionaires uh, working side by side with paupers uh, cleaning ditches and lakes. And I think that you've got a great movie that can change the world to the better. Thank you very much for that, sir. Hello Jacques, hello Roxanne, my name is Mark. We have heard a lot from you, from, uh, from you about a smooth transition from a money-based economy to a resource-based economy. And we also know that the current money-based system is rotten and about to burst. So do you think that a smooth transition is actually going to work or does it make more sense for us to actually hasten the end of the existing financial uh, system it's self-generating fortunately and you, you don't have to throw anybody out or kill anybody the system will die no system can freeze. There can never be a utopia. Every city you design can be changed. If you design a laptop, if you think you can design the best laptop in the world, you're foolish because all things continue to change. There are no final frontiers. All that is artificial. And unfortunately, we don't see that, that the transition will be smooth because people are not educated enough in terms of different ways of thinking or the alternative. We feel there'll be a lot of hardship and we feel that these systems that are in place, the monetary system, those in control, will grasp for the last breath to try and maintain it. 
Um, you know, Jacques always talks about that it'll either go more towards the socialist trends in government or more fascistic. There'll be more controls and more military controls. And unfortunately, the military option seems to be happening more so. Um, so we don't see a smooth transition. The only way we can assure a smoother transition is if more people know about this direction and talk about it and advocate it in every way that they can. That's why we feel it's so important right now to do a major motion picture in, um, in more of an entertaining way so people can see just what it's like, what it could be like in, in living in the city in a resource-based economy and understanding the values and how people interact with one another and how we get from here to there. We think it could get around to more people in the fastest amount of time. I want to interject at this time that there's no such thing as human nature. You are shaped by culture. If you're brought up by the headhunters of the Amazon, as a baby, you'd be a headhunter. If you're brought up in France, vive la France. Every country pushes its own value system, that there's no such thing as freedom of choice. Your choice is within your culture. If you don't understand what I'm saying, ask an American Indian what heaven is like. He says it's a happy hunting ground. Ask an Eskimo what heaven's like. An Eskimo never dreams of walking on a beach with palm trees and coconuts. He can't dream of those things. You can only dream within your culture. You may not like what I'm saying, but think about it. All I'm asking you to do is toss these ideas around. You'll find out that human beings cannot exceed their culture, even though you believe that can be done. That people do not have freedom of choice. They have the reaction to their culture. If you still don't understand that, again, if you're brought up as a baby, in Nazi Germany, you'll be a Nazi unless you've been exposed to other values. So we have to expose people to this new value system, not hope that it'll come about. It won't come about unless you work at it. Thank you. I wish you were, but it isn't. Здравствуйте, я хочу задать вопрос. Good afternoon, sir. I represent here uh, Azerbaijan Institute for Agriculture. I'm a geneticist by trade. However, I have a great interest in the way human consciousness operates. For so many centuries, humans have learned how to create uh, different uh, self-destruction devices. It took us 21 century to develop a nuclear bomb, for example. And this begs the following question. I believe that for a for an ideal city like this to exist, you need to change the psychology not just of the people who live in the cities, but of millions and millions of people around. And I think that people will still be envious, don't you think? People will be envious that, say, somebody else has more members in the family, or somebody else, say, has two rooms when you have one room. So do you think it's actually possible to change the way people think, the psychology, the consciousness of people? It took us 21 centuries to make humans weapons of self-destruction. How many centuries will it take us to become normal people? A set of values that you've picked up in your culture. Let me just tell you this, that human beings can be changed very quickly if you have control of the media. 
If you don't control the media, you cannot change people. In other words, you have to know how to change people. You have to know that there's no such thing as reason. You're brought up to believe that people are reasonable, that you can talk to them. No, you can't. You can't talk to a person that invested a lot of money in oil about the electric car. They're not interested. The electric car would interfere with the profits of the oil company. There's not a single thing you can advocate that someone won't hate you for. Do you understand that? If you find out that man evolved from the lower animal, religious right will hate you. Don't you see that? You're brought up in a culture of many different values and they have no way of knowing which one of those values are more relevant. So you have to go into semantics, communication, the science of language, how it evolved. You have to go into all those things in order to change people. It's not a question of when will the people build the Venus Project. They won't build it. They may kill each other. I don't know what the future will bring, but I do know this. If you do nothing, nothing will happen. So question the hell out of the Venus Project. We encourage that. We question every aspect of what I say. I want you to question it. That's the way we learn. That's the way we make things better. You know, when you talk about thinking that the notion of envy will perpetuate into a saner future or how long you can it will take to change that type of behavior you're thinking within the value system that you pick up today within an extremely scarcity oriented society if you have if everyone has access to goods and services there is no envy because you wouldn't envy your neighbor who can get a baby grand piano say for their child to learn how to play the piano because you could get one too you don't have to go and steal somebody's pocketbook for money because you want to go to a movie show as people children do today you have access to things so if you look into the culture and see what are the variables that create envy that create greed that create um, those types of aberrant behaviors and you design a society you design the, those behaviors out of the society you know if if everybody has access if women have access to education and and anything that they want to do you don't have to go into the streets and fight for human rights people have no idea they think this is an ongoing thing that they always perpetually have to fight for and will perpetually be a watchdog for that's only in this system but when you create a society and a city where everybody has access there is no greed, there is no envy. Those types of behaviors are perpetuated in this society. And generated by the, this right. society. Every pattern of behavior, murderers, serial killers, gays, are all environmentally determined. People think that it's genetic, that you're born with greed and envy and bigotry. It's not. Don't let them tell you that. You know, today they're even looking for the Republican gene or the Democratic gene. Or, you know, it's, it's bizarre. They have no way, no other way of looking at society scientifically. So they blame it on the genes. That's an easy scapegoat. Gracias. The Venus Project is a very <coughs> different system. A question here. Yes. Go ahead. Gracias. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Marina. I come from uh, Moscow State University for Foreign Relations. I have loads of respect for your project and I consider myself a follower. You probably know that uh, most of Russia's territory is uh, in the areas where it's very, very cold. Let's put it like this. So. What's your view for the development of cities in such harsh climates? Thank you very much. Uh, the voice is getting a little choppy on this and the development of, of, of um, uh, cities, and cities in harsh climates like far north. What, what's your idea of developing cities in harsh, cold climates? 
Well, it wouldn't matter to us because we can use geothermal energy. We can tap the heat of the earth, which is, which is there forever. That is, as long as man will be around, you'll have heat in the earth. You can tap geothermal energy, wave power, solar power, wind power. There's always more than enough energy available. We don't have to use fossil fuels. That's a false direction. It's a direction that runs out of energy. There are many sustainable energies, but when the clouds overcome the solar cells, they don't generate electricity. But geothermal energy is there all the time. I see no shortage of energy at all. If we use the methods of science, I'm not talking about scientists, because scientists are just as propaganda subject as the average person. In Nazi Germany, the scientists fell in line with the Nazis. In France, they fell in line with the French. In Spain, they fell in line with the Spanish. That isn't scientists. Scientists ask, why are nations separate? Why do they kill each other? Why do they hurt each other? Why can't they grow enough food to feed everybody? A scientist would never be loyal to any one country, only to the earth, to nature. Never dump radioactive stuff into the ocean. Never pollute the ocean. The U.S. Army dumped 67 tons of nerve gas off the coast of Miami. How can you love the country and do that? You live in a very stupid world. They got a long way to go before they learn how to live together in peace. I'm against the space program. You wouldn't imagine that because I, I'm considered a futurist. I'm against it of any single nation going out in the space because sooner or later, they'll have nuclear weapons out there and laser weapons. They're not intelligent enough yet to utilize that stuff. I would have never worked on the atom bomb and given it to the military. The military is comprised of very limited people, extremely stupid indeed. George Washington had 300 slaves. If we knew that, we'd have run them out of town. Well, most of your politicians know nothing. They don't understand anything. Everything that you have in the world today, your washing machine, your refrigerator, is all technical, your lighting systems. Politics give you nothing. They don't ever increase the agricultural yield, make automobiles safer. They don't know how to do that. So no matter who you elect a political office, you're wasting your time. All our problems are technical, not political. Jack, thank you. Um, thank you, Jack. I'd like to point out that we are currently connected to Kazan Federal University. Uh, let's give them a round of applause as well. Well, they've been tuned in to uh, our webcast as well, so they've sent in several questions, which I'm going to relay now to Jacques. The present system feeds on greed. While you, Jacques, propose a system that is based on curiosity, but it's very difficult for people to organize uh, their time, uh, what, what are the chances that all our resources will be funneled into a race to Alpha Centauri just out of sheer curiosity? Thank you. really curiosity. It's methods of finding answers to problems. What makes it rain? What makes it snow? What makes an earthquake? Once you have answers to that, you can begin to deal with it. But if you rely on intuitive methods, it's a very primitive method. And that method we don't use any longer. If you want to know something, study aeronautics. If you want to know the ocean, study oceanography. Will it give you all about the ocean? Of course not. But it'll give you more than your neighbor can, or more than a non-scientist can. So I'm saying that the scientific method is the closest we have to sanity. Other methods are not as close. 
So does, when you use the term curiosity, what do you mean by that word? When I, won, I met Einstein when I was 17 years old, and I said, do you believe in God? He said, which one? There's so many different concepts of God. I said, do you believe in truth? He says, what do you mean by truth? He forced me to say what I meant by truth. So I said that something was smooth. He put it under a microscope and it didn't look smooth. So I said, is that what it's really like? He said, we can't see things as it really is. We can only see things as our receptors can pick it up. We can't see reality. Don't you understand that? The world you live in is, is full of crap. In other words, the schools, the universities, they're all trapped in a system, all of them. I'm sorry to say that. The language we use was designed hundreds of years ago. We can't talk to each other. We talk at each other. The Venus Project is a totally different system. Please look into it before you attempt to ask questions. Thank you, Jacques. Okay, so first of all, thank you very much for that great opportunity of the direct communication uh, and thank you very much to the Digital October. So um, today I and my colleagues, uh, so I am a linguist, uh, they are the programmers, but we are here as the representatives of the project um, MMM 2011. So my, my question, um, um, do you know? <laughs> Actually, so let me l let me say, please. Uh, so, uh, this the main aim of that project is the financial apocalypse and the elimination of the financial system. So, our question is: Do you know something about that project, and do you see any um, prospects of the future collaboration? So, um, that is our question. Thank you very much. They're asking about a project, MMM. We are not that familiar with that project at all. Uh, we would be glad to collaborate Russia. with people who are interested in the direction of the Venus Project and would like to help bring that about. Um, so we would be glad to hear more about it. Okay. Thanks, Roxanne. Доброго времени суток, Жак. Good afternoon, Jacques. My name is Alexei. First, I've got loads of respect for what you're doing. I think you are doing a great thing. Actually, you know, you're a loudspeaker of truth for me, and in every word you say, I find some something very important to me. You say that it's very important for us to move towards a resource-based economy, and I understand that it's going to take a long time. As part of the same team, MMM 2011, I've got a proposal. Uh, why don't we start locally? Why don't we start by building university cities? Because we can find investment for that. Well, you quoted Einstein in your movie that you can't address a problem using the same tools that gave rise to the problem. I think that, uh, say, we, for example, we no longer work for money. We work for self-actualization. Money is no longer important. This helps us escape the needs to make money, but at the same time we amass significant financial resources which could be funneled is into such local projects. A word of warning from the translator, MMM used to be a notorious Ponzi scheme in the 1990s. It is seeing a revival now in Russia. 
cutting back to what the young man is saying, we have we are now operating in 32 countries. We have already already sent to you several proposals via email, and we've sent our proposal via Skype to Roxanne. So our proposal is that we use our money to build the first prototype city, and then it will go viral. Then people will see how it works and how you can live differently, so that people can start changing their behavior, their psychology. Thank you very much. Yes, we would like to build a first city now and have it dedicated to uh, people who are working in, in improving the next city, people who are working on automated systems, people who are working on books and magazines and media and gaming to try and get these new ideas out there, to working on educational systems for younger children as well. So um, this is what we'd like to see the first city used for, kind of a, a where we could, we, we have lots of plans for the first city and ways of sustaining the security system. So if there is a group that would like to with us on this and they have the funding, we have been looking for funding, then we would like to speak with them. Um, but their, their direction would have to be aligned with the direction we'd like to go in. If I had to say something to sum up the Venus Project, Air, clean water, a relevant education. We're all the same. We all love our kids. We all have feelings. All people are the same all over the world. What differs is that they're brought up in cultures of scarcity or abundance or semi-abundance or deprivation. It's those conditions that alter the behavior of people. But we are all one. And we're build one world and work as one gigantic nation. We must take care of We must work toward bettering, improving the environment. The essential condensation of what the Venus Project is about. We are one people, we share one planet, and we work together as one nation without army, navies, police, or prisons. We don't need that stuff when people have access to the necessities of life. So we would be glad to speak with We don't speak Russian. Um, if there is somebody who could translate, speak with you directly. У нас тут небольшие проблемы со связью, но я думаю, вопросы еще есть. Мы продолжим. So there is uh, this project spearheaded by David Pierce, a British philosopher, and he is the founder of the Global Transhumanistic Association, and his project is called Paradise Engineering. So my question is as follows. You talk about minimizing human suffering while Paradise Engineering seems to also take into account minimization of suffering across the world for all life forms through changes in pharmacology for example and changes in biosphere and David Pierce believes that our biosphere is quite uh, violent are you working with the transhumanists do you, are you on speaking terms with David Pierce thank you very much um, are we on speaking terms with somebody who started a program in Britain? Um, no, I, I, we. His name we is David Pierce. Or, or the project. Okay, another question. With please. him, are you part of that project? Could you introduce him to the Venus Project? Uh, we've just 
if if needed, I can uh, connect this uh, 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 noble gentleman to you, uh, Roxanne and Jack. Okay. Sure. Thank you. У нас уже вечер, поэтому говорю добрый вечер. Меня зовут Александр. Hello, my name is uh, Alexander. I'm a follower and I'm also a private trader. So people have been talking about a smooth versus, uh, you know, a rapid change. And I can certainly agree that an abrupt change is very probable. However, there are countries where very few people are exposed to the stock market. Russia is one of them. For example, uh, and I'm sorry, therefore, a catastrophe in the financial market will not impact, say, Russia or many other countries to the same extent as it would impact the United States. Well, I think back now to the time when aristocracy in uh, Europe was replaced by democracy and Alexis de Tocqueville started this uh, phenomenon. So you talk about, uh, say, education available to everybody. Brings, me, brings to my mind the same story. Several centuries ago, all the privileges of the aristocracy were spread evenly across the society. And since then, not a single great masterpiece in art or culture had been created. Do you think that a similar horrible event can happen? Or alternatively, everything will be accumulated in the hands of a few selected people. Um, I couldn't get the question at all. At all. I, what, what is the ultimate question? Как вы думаете? Do you think that after an, a financial apocalypse there is, there is a chance that financial levers will be accumulated in the hands of a few people while well, now financial levers are spread across the country? You think it'll be in the financial leverage will be in the in the hands of a few people after a crash. What what you fail to grasp is that if we continue to automate, people will not have the purchasing power to sustain a financial country. So the system dies, not because I say so, because automation replaces people and people need purchasing power in order to buy things. The system cannot be sustained unless people borrow money from banks, unless they sustain the system. And if they don't, you can't perpetuate the system. All systems come to an end. There's no single idea you can put out there that will last forever. It always undergoes change. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Yuri Leshkov. Thank you very much for the great dream that you've been talking about. How do you think management and governance will work in this future? How will governments be managed in the future? First thing you have to do is a global survey to see how many factories we have, how much technical personnel, how much resources. Once you know what we have, you know what you can build. If you find out how many cases of heart disease, cancer, cystic fibrosis first, then you build your hospitals proportionate to the conditions that exist, not the opinions of politicians. 
we have to do a survey to see how much aluminum, how much stainless steel, how many uh, I-beams we can manufacture. In other words, we have to know what our productive capacity is, what the carrying capacity of the Earth is, and maintain a population in accordance with the carrying capacity of the environment, not the opinions of politicians. I hope you understand that. If you exceed the carrying capacity of the Earth, then you're going to have malnutrition, starvation, and territorial disruption. That's a result of conditions. All human behavior is a result of the environmental conditions, not some stupid individual recommending this or the recommending that. No, you have to do a survey first. And after your survey, you maintain, through education, a population in accordance with the carrying capacity of the environment. Thank you, Jacques. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a, probably a naive question. Unfortunately, I haven't had the opportunity to study your website. I'm concerned about theology. How do you think you will be able to bridge the divide between different religions? Because currently religions are very strong and they're not about to yield their current position. The way you bridge the divide between religions is you take a person, religious person first, and say, this discussion requires absolute honesty. In the Bible it says, thou shalt not kill. It doesn't say you can kill Wednesdays and Thursdays. It says, thou shalt not kill. You hold them to that. Then you say, judge not, lest you be judged. That means you're not supposed to judge anybody. And everybody does jury duty. Don't you see? They don't even understand what they're reading. They say, if a man, in the Bible it says, if a man strikes you, turn the other cheek. I never met a Christian. I never met a person that behaved that way. So what I do is I've, un, I've taken away religion from most different religious people that I met, not by force or violence or hurting them, but by using the Bible itself. In other words, the Bible is, a, is a, an attempt for man to explain the origin of life and the origin of conduct in human affairs. It's failed miserably. Religious people are no better than anyone else. Sing Sing prison is filled with people with a cross around their neck. And a cross is what man did to Christ. It has nothing to do with the teachings of Christ. Christ was not a, a brilliant man. He was a better man. He tried to make a peaceful world, but he didn't know how. Obviously, if you go to church today, you'll hear gossip in the church. You will not see the manifestations of religion because Christ was not intelligent enough to tell people to be honest with them and say, I don't know where all this came from. I don't know where life came from. That's the honest answer. But when you fabricate a story about a guy up in the clouds that makes a man and a woman and then makes a snake come over and talk to them and tell them to eat of the fruit of knowledge, it's a nonsensical tale, stupid beyond description. And if a person's honest, you can turn them around. And you can turn most people around if you use strategy rather than logic. Oh, hello, Jack. My name is Vastan Adjaman. I would like to say... My name is uh, Vastan Arjun. Well, some smart people have said that egoism and greed rule the world. I must be one of the few people in the audience here who is uh, slightly skeptical about your movie, with all due respect. My personal question for you, Jacques, is how did you manage to live for so long? Is it some special diet or what is it? That's keeping you alive and kicking. Now, the, you want to know how I managed to live so long. I don't manage it. 
I just do what I believe in doing, and I don't do anything special. And I would say that it isn't how long you live, it's the quality of your life. I'd rather live to be 35 years old and well informed than not informed and 105. I hope you understand that. Thank you. There's no limit to human stupidity if not informed. Uh, hello, I'm uh, Zarina, and uh, I'm a mundane student. That's why I have a very simple question. I think that the people who ask questions here are afraid to lose what they've got. Or they simply doubt the feasibility of your project. That's why they have all these petty little questions. Well, I'm a little girl. I don't have much experience, but I can tell you that I've studied everything you have on your website. I'm a follower. I have loads of respect for what you're doing. I think you're indeed doing a great thing. And my question is different. I don't think that the real question is whether the people here want to live like this. And the real question is not whether people in Nigeria would like to live like this. The real question is what shall we do about the people who are doing great now, who've got their skyscrapers in Dubai and Manhattan? What shall we do about the people who have access to all the resources? What shall we do about the powers that be? for whom the Venus Project is the worst of nightmares. Uh, there could be people like that, right? Uh, some of them could be organized into some Masonic circles or something. So what are you going to do about them? Thank you. Well, I can tell you what to do about them. First of all, you don't have to do anything. I said before, the system will run itself into the ground. No system can perpetuate itself. It always comes to a limit. So you don't have to do anything. Education, if we, if we fail to take into account the possible future, other nations will pass us by. And if we fail to deal with these problems, we will destroy the earth. And if we fail to do that, we will destroy one another. Uh, we do not have the value system that will permit us to survive, as yet. I hope you understand that. You don't have to do anything. What do you think about uh, the David Icke research? Uh, what do you think about the Fibonacci theory and the change in vibration cycles, you know, this intermittent uh, dark and uh, light areas or ages? Uh, David Icke, for example, said that we are on a threshold of a change in mentality and this change will happen regardless of what people think about it. It's going to happen because this is how evolution works. Well, in fact, there is even this theory that our planet doesn't rotate in a circle, it rotates in a spiral. So many things are kept away from people. So the Fibonacci theory is that when uh, vibrations change, people will wake up and uh, changes will happen. What do you think about it? Yeah, well, I have no, I can't deal with that. That's a metaphysical assumption. And I can't deal with that. It's the same as religion. There's nothing you can deal with in speculation. I'm sorry about that. People don't just wake up and have a totally new value system. They have to be exposed to things. That's how they acquire the way they think in their value system. They, um, they're able to invent because of the things that they 
they come across within the environment. It's serially developed. You don't just have wake up, you know, with a different vibration in, in, in the next day and have a different way of thinking. It, it doesn't really work like that. If you raised a child in a gray ball and just fed them and wiped their, their behind, then, and you suddenly take them out at 17, they have nothing in their head. They're like a drooling idiot. You acquire everything that you say, that you do, your facial expressions, you pick it up as you're growing up. You know, your mother says, book, pencil, paper, daddy, mommy, who loves you more than anybody? Your, I don't know, they say, I don't know, but your daddy, your mommy, every little word and nuance that you use, you pick up within your environment. Nothing comes from the ether that just comes in your head. That's not how you invent. You have to be exposed to more things. You can learn how to be smart or you can learn how to be stupid. It depends on who you hang around with. Хорошо, я вас понял. Ну, а что вы скажете про Дэвида Айка, если вы знакомы с ним? Он точно так же, как вы, путешествует по всей планете. He also travels the globe, just like your sir. Hello, my name is Alexander Lubimov. I work um, in the medical field, so my question is medical. You don't talk too much about medicine. Genetics... He's coming to it now. So my first question is about inoculation. Would you agree that inoculations and vaccinations are a way to slowly kill the humankind? And my second question is bigger. What is your vision for medicine in Venus Project? Thank you. In the Venus Project, there will be no artificial coloring in food, no artificial preservatives in food. Food will be used and grown organically without pesticides, without genetic engineering, unless we do long-term studies on that. In other words, we have to go, as some would put it, under more natural conditions, grow food, maintain the soil, do not put artificial coloring or flavoring in foods, do not extend the shelf life if, if bugs won't need it, your body can't use it. In other words, there's lots of things we do in medicine, which is a business. When a doctor says your kidney has to come out, we don't know if he's trying to pay off a boat or a new house or whether your kidney has to come out. In the money system, it's very difficult to tell the intent of a person. Thank you. I'm sorry, but you don't have true medicine in a monetary system. You don't have true medical research in a monetary system. If doctors make millions of dollars or hundreds of dollars on surgery, they like to keep it that way. Doctors are not always intelligent beings. They may know more about medicine than the average person, but they are not scientists. That's medicine is an art, not a science. Not yet, anyway. When we become concerned with the well-being of all people, when that is your major concern, you find methods, not pills, to alleviate pain. That is, it uh, doesn't deal with the problem. I don't like most medical research because it isn't as daring as it used to be in the early days. Good evening, Jacques. My name is Unger. I've been uh, watching your movies and reading your works for quite some time. I'm not going to ask you any questions. I'm just using this opportunity to say thank you 
and agree that indeed everything depends on us and in order for us to change we should stop waiting for good things to happen to us we should start working we live in the world of illusion illusion perpetuated by the money-based economy and in order to start living a new life we need to look around you can look at ants for example nobody tells ants what they need to do they behave like they are a single body a single organism I think we need to break up the matrix And I think that what you've got is indeed a very good and in fact a, a very effective way of waking people up, helping people escape from their mattresses. And money, money is material and we need to say goodbye to money as soon as possible and uh, we need to find the sense the meaning of our life in the people around us in the people we love okay dear friends Jacques Roxanne thank you very much I think this is time for us to call it a day I understand it must have been a stress it must have been quite difficult uh, for Jacques, I assume. Roxanne, do you think I can promise on your behalf that if we collect any other questions that haven't been answered so far, we can send them to you? Is that okay? So please send all your questions, guys, to Digital October and we shall redirect them to Jacques and Roxanne and they will be able to address your concerns and questions they will either answer them directly or send you links to specific resources again Jacques and Roxanne thank you very much for what you've been doing for all of us also I would like to use this opportunity to thank our partners that's uh, Ross Telecom, our general partner, and Russian Venture Company, our intellectual partner. So, dear colleagues, please come again to us, and uh, we wish you all sorts of success in your development. Thank you very much. End of transmission.